Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. In the previous classes, you have already begun learning the different ages of English literature. Today, we will be dealing the Jacobian age, which is a very prominent age of literature. The Jacobian age was preceded by the Elizabethan age. In this period, Queen Elizabeth was the ruler and she was a great artistic and literary enthusiast. She encouraged and motivated people to become artists and give a lot of encouragement to artists during her time. This resulted in a number of artists coming up and the creations were extraordinary during her period. In 1603, the great Queen Elizabeth passes away and after her reign, James I came to throne. James I was a distant relative of Queen Elizabeth. The time period or the ruling period of James I is known as the Jacobian age. This age is an age of social and philosophical transitions. Increasingly dark and ambiguous drama is one of the most peculiar features of this age. Dramatists like Webster who wrote The Duchess of Malfi and the White Devil and Turner, who wrote The Revenger's Tragedy, began a new writing style for the writers of the Jacobian age. In this period, we could see that science was given a lot of importance and astronomy was something that people actually looked forward. And another feature of this time was religion, especially Christian religion, was challenged by people. People began to question about God. They were believing too much on science rather than religious beliefs. While learning the Elizabethan age, the most prominent writer that that age has gifted literature was William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare started his career during the Elizabethan age and it continued during the Jacobian age also. So when we take literature into consideration, we could say that the ages are overlapped when we take literature. That is, a literature doesn't end with an age, it continues to another age also. So many features that were in the Elizabethan age were carried over to the Jacobian age. But sooner we could see that the Jacobian age writers found a style of their own. They were giving uh, importance to a lot of other moral values than that of the Elizabethan age. In the Elizabethan age, writers were having a moral conscience. They believed that the good will triumph over the evil and they were giving characters a very positive vibe. And when we look into the works of Shakespeare itself, we could see that earlier in his career, especially during the Elizabethan age, he has written most of his comedies. But when he, he began to write during the Jacobian age, his writing style changed and he began to concentrate more on tragedies. And these tragedies were considered as one of his most important works in his career. In the writers, we could see that they began to write about corruption and violence in their works and they did not give importance like the uh, goodness should triumph and all. All those things were not at all given importance. But they began to uh, represent rulers that were highly corrupt in their work. Along with Shakespeare, a number of writers uh, 
actually grew during this period they were uh, writers who were there during the elizabethan age who overlapped with the jacobian age the most prominent writers of this period were ben johnson george chapman bjormund and fletcher middleton haywood webster turner messenger and shirley and we could say that a number of great poets were also born during this time and they are john milton john dun drummond drayton and so on dramatists and poets were not the uh, only people who were uh, who were there during this period there were also prose writers and the major prose writers were bacon burton john dun we have already told his name he was a poet and also he has written a lot of sermons so he he was also a prose master so king james first uh, jacobian period has actually given us a lot of important writers of literature now we will go into a little bit of glimpse of the popular genres during this period the first one is tragic comedy what do you mean by tragic comedy it is actually a literary genre that blends both tragic and comic forms most of this technique is seen in dramatic literature it could be a play in which there is it, it, it may it may be a tragic play that contains a lot of comic elements or it may be uh, a play with a serious play with a happy ending either way round it could be called as a tragic comedy tragic comedy and uh, a famous writer uh, who wrote tragic comedy were bjormund and fletcher the next genre is mask it actually flourished during the 16th and early 17th century europe and uh, it was developed in italy at first and a mask actually involves music and dancing singing and acting uh, there will be an elaborate stage design mm, there will be an ar- architectural framing costumes uh, everything okay it it's extremely colorful and vibrant to watch uh, professional actors and musicians were hired uh, to sing and speak in this mask so uh, this was actually a very uh prominent um program during that time and ben johnson was a, a dramatist who actually wrote masks and the third one is revenge tragedy revenge tragedy is also known as a revenge play it is a dramatic uh, genre and in this the protagonist or the hero of that play seeks revenge for an imagined or actual injury that he has had okay the protagonist is uh, taking revenge on someone or uh, something okay and the term revenge tragedy was introduced in 1900 by a h thorndike okay a h thorndike was the person who uh introduce this term and uh the late elizabethan and early jacobian writers began to write plays in this manner when we go a little bit deeper into revenge tragedies we could see that william shakespeare and his contemporaries actually get inspiration from the roman tragedy in particular seneca's thyestes okay seneca is a roman uh, tragedy writer he is a very prominent writer and his thyestes is actually uh, the work which inspired william shakespeare and his contemporaries to write revenge tragedy and uh, we'll just go into the features of senecan revenge 
revenge tragedy we we have already seen that seneca is actually the person who has influenced uh, the major writers of this jacobian age and the features of senecan revenge tragedy was uh, there will be a secret murder uh, it could be a murder of a ruler okay um, a ruler has been secretly murder murdered and uh, there will be a ghostly uh, person who is actually uh, the person who gives uh, the clue regarding the murder and all and this ghost might reveal uh, his murder uh, murdering scene to someone like maybe it may be his son or something and there will be a catastrophe there will be a violence destruction madness a lot of uh, intriguing and uh, plotting that happened for the murder of that person so it's kind of very uh, what you call uh, interesting to see but uh, uh usually it's it's been uh, widely accepted by people during that time to see all these corruption and violence uh, on stage and they were uh, accepting it because it was actually completely different from what they have seen before jacobian age we could see that in elizabethan age everything was so peaceful so happy so pleasant so divine so moral and all but uh, audience actually accepted when they were able to see a new vibe a new scene a new uh, clarity or new vision of writers and they were actually enjoying this revenge tragedy so these are some of the genres in which uh, the writers wrote during the jacobian age and now moving on we could see that what all were the most uh, uh, prominent things that happened during the jacobian age in literature especially was that shakespeare wrote his prominent plays like king lear macbeth the tempest and all during the reign of james i and uh, he uh, was actually um, writing in a style in which people accepted and all these uh, dramas we could see are pure tragedies and they are considered as the most important works in shakespeare's career another prominent thing that happened during uh, this period was uh, the translation of the bible by king james it was one of the most important uh, factors that happened during this time uh, it was a huge translation project and it began on 1604 and it uh, was finished in 1611 and it was led by james first the king james first himself and there were 47 scholars who helped him out to do this uh, gigantic process there were also certain movements in literature during this time and the most prominent among them was the metaphysical poets uh, john dun that we we will be dealing with him pretty soon he is a metaphysical poet and when we deal with john dun we'll definitely uh, go through what is metaphysical poets and all so that said uh, that's a very brief introduction about the jacobian age i hope you have understood what uh, the age is what are the major features what are the genres in which the writers wrote who are the major writers and why is it called jacobian age and all those things have been covered in this uh, segment i hope this session was fruitful for you all it's kirti signing off thank you so much